In today's video, I'm going to show you how I do a whole house tidy up when life's a bit hectic. And it always is, I'm not going to lie. There are so many things that need to get done and not enough hours in the day. And I've just got to say now, if you've clicked onto this video thinking that you're going to get the magic formula on how to keep the house pristine at all times, you've clicked on the wrong video. This video is all about how to keep the mess at a manageable level. It's about how to get it to the point where it still looks a bit lived in, but it's cosy and it's nice to be in. It's something I do when I'm sick and tired of constantly picking up and nothing ever looking clean anyway. It's something I do when I don't feel like I've been present enough with my family. And I want to sort the house in a time efficient way so that I've still got time to fully engage and enjoy life and spend time with the people I brought here. <laughs> Because sometimes when you've got a busy life, maybe you're a parent, maybe you work shifts, when you get home, it can feel like all you're doing in your free time is tidying up. And who wants to feel like that? That's no life. This is something I've always done occasionally, but I've started doing it a lot more regularly now. And let me tell you, my life has transformed. Does the house still get extremely messy? Absolutely. This house can get messy in a few seconds. But with this method, I don't find myself stressing about it throughout the day. I don't find myself sitting there procrastinating, thinking, oh, I've got to do this and ultimately wasting a lot of time. Because that's something I'm very prone to, avoiding things I don't want to do. I put them off until the last minute and I just sit there ruminating. Anyway, so what I've been doing is I've been waking up just an hour earlier and I do a 10 minute speed clean in each room. As you can see, we're doing the bedroom first. But I do this clean before we do anything else, before breakfast, before teeth brushing, I get this clean done. Because I know if I start doing something else, this isn't going to get done. Doing it at this time is what's been working for me, but it doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for you. We all live on different schedules. Some of us are night owls, some of us are morning people, some of us work long shifts. But the beauty of this method is you can fit it around any type of schedule and it only takes around one hour a day. And that's if you do a whole house clean. Depending on your circumstances and how fast your house gets messy, you could maybe do 10 minutes in one area each day of the week. It's all about finding what schedule works for you. For me, as I said earlier, the house can look like this within a day. It's just how it is. I used to get really frustrated at myself I'm a naturally messy person. If you've not been on my channel before, yeah. I used to think, oh, why is my house such a pigsty and other mothers seem to have everything all together? Not true, by the way. We all know that. But it goes through your head, doesn't it? When you see all of these pristine homes on social media, it makes you feel bad about yourself. Especially if being organised doesn't come naturally to you and you have to work really hard at it. It can be very, very exhausting and mentally draining. So using timers and doing it at the time of day I do it, I basically accomplish a huge task. I get my boost of dopamine. I feel proud of myself before the day's even really started, before any of us have even eaten. Sometimes the boys are still asleep. Sometimes they potter around and play and sometimes they come and help. But it's just such a huge weight off my mind. It sets the day up to be a good day. It even makes the day feel longer. And it helps me be a better version of myself. It helps me be a better mum, a better partner. It's just done absolute wonders for my mental health. And so I wanted to share it with you. I think it's important to share though, I cannot stick at this all the time. I wish I could and one day I hope I can, but I'm a very cyclic person. I'll get into a role, maybe a week, maybe two. And then one morning I'll wake up and I'll be like, ah, this is not happening this morning. And I'll snooze the alarm. I suspect it's hormonal. But yeah, that can put me in a really awful mood because I know how good the day can be when I've gotten up and when I've been determined. But sometimes it's just not happening. And I think it's so important to mention that, especially as women and men, but with our cycles especially, we're not going to be functioning at top form all the time. It's just not scientifically possible. We ebb and flow, and that's natural. And I've said this before in another video, but I think there's value in letting things slip a little bit, leaning into rest, giving yourself a mental break and thinking, do you know what? This can wait. 
Sometimes self-care is just lying on the settee and stuffing your face. It really is. And then equally, sometimes self-care is kicking yourself up the bum and saying, no, come on, we're getting up and we're doing this. Being someone who thrives on routine and consistency, that's something that's been really hard for me to accept. I've always been of the opinion that one day I'll be able to power through. One day I'll be mentally strong enough to just power through. And I've never been able to. Because it was never about being mentally strong. I was physically exhausted. You know, I'm sure a lot of other mums can relate here. I still get up with my son multiple times in the night and then I wonder why I can't function properly in the day. And I'm sat there thinking if there's something medically wrong with me or I'm just mentally weak. No. Not only that, but there are certain points in my cycle where I feel so fatigued that I can get 12 hours sleep at night and I'll still need a nap in the day. And I've fought it and fought it and tried to power through, barely being able to keep my eyes open. Now, when I need a nap, I need a nap. It is what it is. And I lean into a day of rest. And I know when the time comes, I'll be back up at 6.30 again doing this. And if it's gotten to the point where it's been days and days of me not being able to get up and me snoozing the alarm and not doing the normal routine, that's when I'll have a word with myself. And I'll be like, look, do we want to get to the point again where we have to grapple and fight to get back into a routine? Or should we just do it today? Because I'm one of those people that when you fall out of routine, I can't just get straight back into it. It takes days and days of trying to convince myself that it's good for me. That's another reason why I hate giving myself a rest day, because I know what's going to happen. The little gremlin on my shoulder will be like, just one more day. Let's just have one more day. Let's get a Mackie's and sit in front of the telly. But yeah, it's about finding that balance and knowing when you genuinely do need a rest and recognising when the gremlin just wants you to be comfortable and not push yourself. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyway, for those of you who are just listening and are not actually watching the screen, we made it downstairs, we're on the living room and I managed to get every room upstairs looking really decent. Not perfect, the upstairs bathroom could have done with a really good scrub, but I didn't have time, and that's okay. It's amazing how much you can get done in 10 minutes, and getting rid of that bulk mess carves out space for you to then be able to go back and do the deep cleans and do the reorganising of the cupboards and things like that. As well as carving out time for you to be able to go and enjoy your day and your free time and spend it with your loved ones. As I said, this is not about perfection or deep cleaning or making everything pristine. It's not even about keeping on top of it throughout the day and picking up as you go along. Because I'm just absolutely terrible at that. By the end of the day today, the house is going to look messy again. But the difference is, it's manageable mess, not overwhelming mess. And honestly, that's good enough for me. It'll be the kind of mess that I know if I get a phone call that my friend's about to pop over, I can whiz round and make it look clean. (laughs) That's what I'm about. That's what I'm going for. I just want a lived-in, cosy house that feels like home. I don't want to worry about toys on the floor or spilled drinks. I was very anxious about that stuff as a kid. And I don't want my children to feel that way, like they're walking on eggshells in their own house. And that any moment someone might be huffing and puffing around you with the hoover, with a tense and stressed out energy. Because it's not worth it. Having a clean house all the time is not worth that. So this is my compromise. I get it done in the morning before the day's started. And we do our best not to turn it into a pigsty, don't get me wrong. But if mess happens throughout the day, it's not the end of the world. We've done our bit of upkeep for the day and we're going to do something else. We're going to focus on making memories, we're going to laugh, we're going to make art. Anything other than focusing on cleaning. And I hope you can tell that this comes from a place of experience, of being someone who stressed themselves out so much. Wanting things to always be perfect and look perfect and then getting wound up because it's just not possible. And it comes from experience of being that messy child that got on their parents' nerves. (laughs) I see it from both sides now. I recognise how stressful it is just being an adult in today's society. You want a calming space to come home to. (laughs) But it's important to remember that kids don't see the mess in the same way we do because they don't have as many stresses in their life. 
they're just exploring and learning through play. They're not doing anything malicious. Although I'm sure sometimes it can feel that way. And this is another reason I think this method is so cool. Using time as turns cleaning into a challenge in a game and it makes kids more inclined to get involved without being asked to. You know, who doesn't want to beat the timer and see how much they can get done? I'm sure a lot of you saw Rudy helping out throughout this video. He absolutely loves to do these morning cleans. And he does it purely because he wants to be helpful. I put no obligations on him and he can potter in and out of cleaning whenever he wants to and go and play with his brother or watch TV. It just genuinely has made family life, chaotic family life, so much more easy going. And we're on to the final room of the house, the kitchen. Now, this is the room I got the least amount of stuff done in. It really did not look that different, but I wasn't going to upset myself over it. At this point, the kids were getting a bit restless. They wanted their breakfast. I wanted a shower because I smelt like a ferret. And I opened the cupboard to put the pots away and everything fell out all over the floor. So I got my 10 minutes done, shoved a load of washing in and patted myself on the back. And there you have it. That was a whole house clean done in 10 minute timers, 60 minutes, job done. And I hope you found it helpful and really enjoyed watching. Maybe you learnt something new, maybe it's something you already do. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the chat and I'll see you next time.